EDM stands for electronic dance music. Whether it's your first event or your 50th, knowing any of these five styles of dance will help you put that D in EDM. First off, let's get the stigma out of the way and say any dancing is the right way of dancing to EDM. Just get out there and move. I don't care what you look like, dance like no one's watching. Okay, now that the cringy cliches are out of the way... The thing Fortnite did right was emote. Some people may not like it, but the dances that Fortnite popularized are often goofy to watch, fun to do, and easy to learn. If you have a hard time learning any of the dance styles that originate from the EDM community, doing Fortnite dances is a totally acceptable thing at all times. For example, the classic floss will certainly hit properly to any EDM drop. But now for the actual list, five styles that put the D in EDM and their difficulty level. Counting down from number 5, Flow Arts. Difficulty level, advanced. Flow Arts encompasses everything from poi and hoops to space whip and even pizza spinning. Flow Arts are as varied as they are inseparable from the electronic dance music culture. Every festival and rave on the planet is going to be populated by people finding a balance point to manipulate or a pattern to wave around repeatedly. These props are built with trippy patterns, flags, LEDs, and some can even be set on fire, all to enhance the patterns they flow through. Naming and describing each of the various flow arts you'd find at festivals could be a whole video in and of itself, and let me know if you'd like to see that video. Some of the more common flow arts you'll see at an event may include Poi, Rope Dart, Hoop, Lightsaber, Staffs, Whip, Boogang, Kendama, and Pizza Dough. If your favorite flow art didn't make the list, clickety clack angrily at me at the comments and tell me what for. The point is, there is so many ways to use physics to dance with props and EDM is a breeding grounds for this behavior. Number 4, Gloving. Difficulty, beginner to advanced. Okay, so in case you're new here, this one is kinda my thing. Gloving light shows are a unique combination of magic and dance that uses persistence of vision illusions to create visuals that make the music come to life. I've got tons of good gloving content to watch here on my channel, so when you finish this video be sure to check out the end card with the learn to glove playlist attached, and also check out yougotmoves.com backslash tutorials for a comprehensive list of all the good top quality tutorials from the talent in the gloving community. If you end up like me, a total rave moth who stitatively has lost himself in the finger wheels, check out my book, Mastering the Art of Gloving, The Literal Handbook. Number 3, Liquid and Tutting. Difficulty, Intermediate to Advanced. To be fair, these two are included in the tutorial section for gloving, but that's because these two are the precursors to gloving. These two dance styles have been around since the 90s, and the only reason that they might be considered a little easier than gloving is number one, you actually have to have gloves and lights for gloving, and number two, gloving actually has a focus that prioritizes the fingertips and the patterns based around the fingertips. Liquid and tutting are dances that uses the body's proportions and the joints to make either waves or angles. Each of these dances has a vast collection of techniques to explore, so reducing them to that short of a description isn't fair to them whatsoever. If you make it past the initial beginner techniques and still want to learn more, look into Hadoken and Kai Sosceles, two liquid and tutting legends with a lot to teach. Number two, shuffling. Difficulty, intermediate to advanced. 303 said it best, so I don't have to. I also don't know if I'm allowed to without a copyright claim, so let's just not. Shuffling is an incredibly energetic dance style. It's a leg-centric dance, and it involves quick steps, jumps, turns, and spins. It's hard enough to learn the steps, but what makes shuffling the hardest to learn, in my opinion, is the sheer amount of energy involved in actually doing this dance. But this dance has one particular thing that puts it above all the other dance forms. Butts. Do this dance every day for six months and see if you don't have an absolute dumpy Number one, headbanging. Difficulty, beginner. So some people might get upset here, but the most basic dance you can do at a dubstep show is headbanging. 
Like, the hardest part of this dance is doing it in a way that actually doesn't literally break your neck. Just hold on tight to something and throw your head forwards and then backwards. The exercise is an advice in this video are in no way intended as a substitute for medical counseling. Because of the different- Seriously though, don't hurt yourself doing any of these dances. Pace yourself at the next show and drink plenty of water, you dehydrated prune. Check out some of my other videos and visit yougotmoves.com for more info if you want to learn gloving.